So what is capnogram? This is basically a graphical plot representing the uh, varying levels of carbon dioxide exhaled during your one breath cycle. Now let us discuss about capnography. So like how we are measuring SpO2 in our oxygenation levels in pulse oximetry, we are measuring exhaled carbon dioxide in capno capnography. So what is capnogram? This is basically a graphical plot representing the uh, varying levels of carbon dioxide exhaled during your one breath cycle. So when you plot that, you get a graph like this, right? So where I can say this as A, B, C, D and E. So this A to B is rep representing baseline. This B to C is actually representing your carbon dioxide exhalation mainly from dead space. So dead space is the main component here and to some extent respiratory bronchioles. Right. And this C to D is mainly comprising of your exhaled carbon dioxide from to some extent respiratory bronchioles but main component is alveolar ventilation okay so alveolar ventilation from this d to e is basically when you start inspiration so you're no longer expiring carbon dioxide you are into inspiration and this is the baseline again starts with a here so the most important part of this waveform capnography especially in the icu setting is this portion d this is what we call as etco2 what do I mean, mean by ETCO2? It means end tidal carbon dioxide. See, for, for many years, when I was an undergraduate and a postgraduate student, I was believing ETCO2 means endotracheal tube carbon dioxide because the only setting where we were using ETCO2 monitoring was when the patient was on ventilator and there was a small sensor hooked to the endotracheal tube. So I was always assuming that ETCO2 means endotracheal tube carbon dioxide, but it's basically end tidal carbon dioxide. So this is where our uh, tidal expiration is is ending and we are taking a CO2 reading. What is the normal ETCO2 range? 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury. This is the normal ETCO2 range. When it is less than 35 or more than 45, it signifies some kind of pathology. Okay, so we will discuss more, more about that in the subsequent slides. So when you plot this graph, if you notice that this plateau phase, I mean C2D, which is basically alveolar ventilation and to some extent respiratory bronchioles, if that is absent, what does that mean? That means there is bronchospasm or asthma. Okay, so that is in, in general setting. But when it comes to ICU, it means many more things. What, what could that be? It means there is either partially kinked or occluded endotracheal tube. So when the endotracheal tube is partially kinked or occluded, you may get absence of this plateau phase of the capnographic wave. But on the other hand, if there is complete occlusion, what would happen to the capnographic you will get a flat line because there is no carbon dioxide being exhaled or the exhaled carbon dioxide is not coming out through your tube or your breath you're getting a flat line but if there is plateau loss it means there is bronchospasm or asthma on one side or in a ventilated patient that means there is either king tube or partial occlusion of the tube if you notice that with time your uh, etco2 is increasing okay so what does that mean that means hypoventilation, right? hypoventilation because ventilation is not adequate with every breath more and more carbon dioxide is there for elimination, right? So that means hypoventilation. What does that mean in ICU setting? That means you have not set the respiratory rate adequately on ventilator, right? Or you have not set adequate tidal volume either you have set inadequate respiratory rate or you have set inadequate tidal volume now if you notice uh, with every breath your etco2 is decreasing it is below 35 and it is decreasing that means probably the patient is hyperventilating or on your ventilator setting you have set a uh, respiratory rate is which is more than higher than required then if you notice that with every breath your etco2 reading is increasing but it the baseline is not touching its previous baseline what do you make sense of it 
that means either patient is rebreathing the carbon dioxide that is exhaled or it can also mean you have set either inadequate expiratory time so there is no sufficient time for the expiration for the carbon dioxide to be eliminated that is why it is building up or it can also mean you have a faulty expiratory valve uh, on your ventilatory circuit or there is inadequate inspiratory flow these are the pitfalls or the possibilities when you get this kind of a waveform where your etco2 is increasing and the baseline is not touching the baseline okay then you can also notice something interesting called as Curare cleft. If the patient is mechanically ventilated and he has been given a muzzle blockade, you can get a cleft on the capnogram. And the depth of muzzle blockade correlates with the depth of the cleft that you see in the capnogram. Then last thing we should be talking about is when there is cardiac arrest, this is the kind of waveform you get. Okay. And there is cardiac arrest, obviously, there is inadequate tissue perfusion. And because of that, there is inadequate carbon dioxide transported from the tissues to the lungs. So ETCO2 is assuming kind of a flat line. And when you start compressing the chest, you may notice minimal uh, ETCO2 activity. When your ventilation is adequate, you will get ETCO2 more than 15 millimeters of mercury. So this is one of the yardstick, right, to assess whether your CPR performance is adequate with respect to ventilation. When someone changes i mean when the rescuer changes right? you are giving cpr now you take a break you move other side and someone else takes over you may get such a cleft okay then look at this last one so this the similar story where the patient is being given cpr but now after patient has achieved rosc what do i mean by rosc return of spontaneous circulation it is your to steeply rises so a steep rise in ETCO2 on a patient who is being uh, subjected to cardiopulmonary resuscitation can be an indicator that patient has now achieved spontaneous circulation. Okay. So that was about uh, ETCO2 monitoring.